Hey everybody, this is Reapy Ron. Welcome back to the channel. Today we are doing another Killing Floor 2 tier list. This is taking a look at all the DLC weapons, and I will be ranking them and discussing whether or not you might want to buy them or not. I don't actually own any of the DLC weapons for this game, but I have tried all of them, and if you're on PC, you can enable them without actually buying them, so long as either you either A, you have a friend that already has them and then you can try them. Whoever in the lobby has them, you can try them. Or B, if you go into solo mode and enable cheats and then put in the actual spawn code to get these weapons, then you can try them out as well. So uh, I would ad advise trying these out before you buy them to see how good you like them, because um, that's going to be a big part of this as well. Even though the weapon might be really strong, you might not actually like it or the other way around. It might be really fun, but you don't really like it. So we're just going to go class by class and we're going to start out with Berserker's weapons and we're going to start out with the two crossover weapons. So first up we have the Road Redeemer. I'm not going to go into all the stats of these weapons. I'm just going to gloss over them quickly. The Road Redeemer can be uh, obtained by buying the other game Road Redemption and this weapon is virtually the same as the Katana. So if you like the Katana but you want something a little bit different this weapon might be for you. Uh, most people aren't the biggest fan of the Katana right now. It does virtually everything the katana does except for instead of a stab it does a bash attack. Um, it has the same damage, it has the same scaling, it weighs the same at 5 and goes up to 8 I believe. Um, it has faster light attacks and it does heavy attacks. Um, it, Like I said, it's pretty much the same as the katana. So if you like the katana but you want something different, you can go with that. If not, then don't worry about it. And overall as a weapon, I put it in C tier. It's not one of Berserker's best weapons. Um, it's not like a bad weapon or anything, though. For its weight, it's fine. It's just it has to compete with other weapons like the Hemoclobber. It's an okay weapon, though. I kind of like the look of it. So, again, if you like the look and if you like the other game, then I would say it's definitely worth getting. But, you know, if not, then don't bother with it. All right, up next we have the Zweihander. And this is uh, obtained by either getting the Killing Floor 2 Digital Deluxe Edition or getting uh, Chivalry uh, Medieval Warfare. Either of those games, then you get the Zweihander as a crossover weapon. Um, the Zweihander is its own weapon, though. It's not like the um, the Road Redeemer, where it's uh, virtually all the same stats as the Katana. This one is quite a bit different. Um, and a lot of people really like Chivalry and probably already have it, so this shows up into a, a lot of games. It's not uncommon to see the Zweihander. It does pretty high damage as well. It does um, pretty decent slashing damage with its light attacks. It does really good heavy damage. It has decent reach. It has uh, its stab ability, which is nice. It scales okay. It doesn't really scale the best. And it weighs a, a good amount to start out with. It weighs 7, which is kind of difficult to fit in with Berserker. Um, and its upgrades really don't give it a ton more damage. It's one of the better weapons just to not upgrade. Um, you can upgrade it though and still use it with quite a few other uh, Berserker weapons in combination if you want to use it with like the nail gun, the hemoglobber, the um, even like the road redeemer or katana I guess, uh, pulverizer as well. You have a couple options and as a weapon I'd put it into A tier. It's pretty fun. I really enjoy it. Um, I really like it and it's it works pretty well in Berserker. Like I said, unupgraded is the way to go, but if you want to throw upgrades into it, say you're going with like it and the Hemo Clobber and you just want to upgrade both, that's perfectly fine too. All right, now we're getting into the uh, actually pay for guns. Um, I guess just all the weapons in general. Um, so first up is the Frost Fang. The Frost Fang, I believe, is the newest um, addition to the DLC weapons, and it is arguably the strongest of the DLC weapons. Um, it's for both Berserker and support, and I'll talk about it a little bit when we talk about support's weapons, since, uh, support technically has two on here. So, on Berserker, um, you get a ranged weapon that has a pretty fast melee attack, it has a pretty good blocking, um, well, just, it has blocking, which is really nice for a melee, or for a ranged weapon. Um, so you can block, you can stab, uh, it does frost damage with its shot, it does pretty decent damage per shot, the spread is more so than most other shotguns. That being said, it's still not that bad, um, and just having a ranged weapon with a Berserker is really nice, especially when it doubles as your melee weapon. You also do bonus damage when you freeze something and then hit it with the axe. So overall, this is probably one of the strongest DLC weapons, and probably just one of the strongest weapons in the game at the moment. 
So it's going to go to S tier. Um, if you really like Berserker and support and you want just a very strong weapon, then this might be the one for you. But again, you're, you guys are going to have to be the one to make that decision if you want to buy the DLC weapons. It's not like, um, you need this to beat like hell on earth with Berserker, not at all, um, or even support. You really don't. Um, this one might be more on, on the lines of the pay to win type of weapons though, because it is really, really strong. Uh, the ion thruster is next. And this one is also really strong. Um, this is a tier five berserker weapon. Uh, so you can't upgrade it. It was, I believe one of the first, or maybe the first, uh, DLC weapon that they added to the game. It acts like a lightsaber. It has its own combos, which is pretty cool. It functions pretty similar to like the Zweihander or the, um, the katana in a lot of ways slashes in about the same pattern with both its light heavy and stab attacks and then it also has a unique ability where if you parry block um, hit something really do anything uh, with it you'll build up charge and if you build the charge all the way up to 100 you can use its special attack where it reaches out twice as far and this weapon already has the longest reach out of berserkers weapons uh, so it reaches out twice as far as that, dealing really high damage to everything and knocking everything away from you. Uh, it is a very strong weapon, and it is probably one of Berserker's strongest weapons. It also does fire damage and damage over time, which usually doesn't matter all that much with Berserker, but it is, you know, maybe a little bit nice every once in a while when you smack a Scrake or a Flesh Pound and it decides to kind of freak out from the fire so you can just keep whacking. It's still a really, really strong weapon and one of Berserker's strongest, and it's probably an S tier. Uh, Berserker has some pretty strong uh, DLC paid weapons. So uh, this is where I put all the Berserker's weapons. Now let's talk about Commandos. This is the minigun. And the minigun is a pretty fun weapon. It's not a really a good weapon for Commando though. Uh, it weighs too much for Commando is the thing. It weighs 10. It does um, 35 damage, I believe, per shot, and it has the highest rate of fire out of all the weapons, uh, only being tied with the Glock 18s, which are on here, and the Vector with the SWAT, or the Chris SMG, uh, whatever you want to call it. It holds, I believe, like 90 rounds in it, so going like larger capacity magazines is actually really fun with this weapon because you can shoot it for quite a while before you have to reload. It's also pretty fun for extending Zed time. Overall, it is a fun weapon. It's just not a good weapon for uh, Commando because it weighing 10, you only have the AR-15 as an on-perk weapon besides dual 1911s. Or, I mean, dual uh, 9mm, not 1911s. You could go with 1911s. Um, but that pretty much means you're going to go off perk with this. With um, Survivalist, it's actually a pretty good weapon. Because Survivalist, with Weapon Harness, you still have another 10 weight that you can play with. And that's not bad. Uh, I should also mention, this is a Tier 5 weapon too for uh, Commando, so no upgrades to it whatsoever. Um, like I said, fun weapon, but honestly not that great of a weapon. Um, just for the fun factor in this though, I'd probably put it into B tier. As a weapon for Commando, it would be like C tier. I think I've always put it in like C tier, because it does have some use. Um, but... Like, it's mostly you're taking it because it's fun. That's that's the main reason, is that it's fun. It also does uh, bonus damage towards bosses, so that's kind of nice as well. Um, all right, up next is the Mine Reconstructor. This is Medic's um, DLC weapon. This one is a very bizarre weapon. Um, a lot of people do like it, and I understand why. It's a very easy-to-use weapon, and it's a very, I guess, passive weapon. Because you can use it just to put down um, pretty much mines for the enemy to step across. Or for teammates to step across to get healing. Um, this forms goo balls out on the front of it. Depending on how long you charge it, you can fire those off. If you hit something directly with it, it'll splash on them, dealing damage to them. And every uh, enemy around them, it'll also heal all allies around them. And it will uh, spread poison to all enemies that it hits. Uh, if it doesn't hit anything, it will bounce and hit the ground. It can bounce off walls, ceilings, anything like that. But wherever it hits, it'll hit the ground and it will act very much like the bloats mine. So if you step, if enemies or allies step across it, it will go off and either heal or hurt or both. Um, it is a very like user friendly weapon. And 
I almost want to say like brain dead weapon, but I don't mean that in like a bad way. Um, like so long as you're using the weapon, it's pretty strong and you're not just like clustering all of your minds in the corner of the map where nothing's going to step on it. Um, that's about the only like non-use of it. It's also very good in loops. If, if the map has any large loops in it, you can just constantly put these down and everything will walk through it and you'll just kill everything on the map. Um, so pretty good and kind of fun, really weird. And it does weigh a decent amount. So that's not too big of a deal with medic though. You can go pistol or submachine gun or off perk or whatever. Um, probably like an A tier weapon. I don't say it, I would put it below the Zweihander because I find the Zweihander more fun and I just really like the look of the Zweihander. But um, like A tier, it's still pretty good. All right, and then let's go on to support. So let's talk about the Frostfang again. For support, the Frostfang is not as good as it is for Berserker. That being said, it's still probably one of their better weapons, though. And that's saying quite a bit because support has some really good weapons. Support really doesn't have any bad weapons, but the Frostfang just makes their arsenal even better. Uh, it doesn't weigh that much for support because you can take it as a secondary. You can take it just for the um, utility that it gives you because then you get a weapon that you can block with. You can melee with, assuming you run out of rounds completely. You can freeze things. So a very versatile weapon. And it's like a great backup for support or a backup to their backup because support's probably going to be wielding, you know, two to three shotguns, depending, uh, maybe even four. So pretty good weapon. And uh, there's nothing really like. There's nothing really else to say about it. Like, it's just a good weapon for support. Like I said, it's not as good on support as it is Berserker, but that's more just because Berserker gets a ranged weapon that's pretty good. Support already had a bunch of ranged weapons that are pretty good. Uh, so adding another one is great, but it's not as impressive in my opinion. Uh, so still probably like an S tier weapon and probably one of the best DLC weapons. Um, this is the Blunderbuss, which is a support and a demo weapon. So I'll be talking about it again in just a second. For support, the Blunderbuss is pretty good. Um, it's a super fun weapon, which uh, will play into my my list quite a bit. Um, with its primary fire, it fires out cannonballs. It holds three shots, so you can fire three cannonballs or three shotgun shots. Uh, primary fire is the cannonballs. They go um, however far until they hit something and then explode, dealing damage to everything around them. They actually don't have a safe distance, so you can injure yourself and kill yourself with the primary fire without much trouble with the uh blunderbuss as i said it's a super fun weapon oh it's secondary fire is the shotgun mode it does the most amount of damage per shot out of any of the shotguns which is kind of saying quite a bit the round also bounces uh in shotgun mode so it can bounce twice similar to like the nail gun and overall it's a pretty fun weapon it's a pretty uh decent weapon to take it doesn't weigh too much so you can take it for whatever the cannonballs can be used to some extent to blow up like small crowds of uh, Zeds. Um, I think just for the fun factor, though, I'm probably actually going to put this one in S tier. I just really like it. Um, and if you haven't tried it, check it out. It's like super fun to use. It might not be the most practical weapon uh, in the game, which is why I somewhat hesitate to put it into S, but I'm going to put it into like low S. And then let's talk about it for demo. For demo, it's actually quite good. Um, you get the cannonballs, which can do a lot of damage and just work as pretty much a stronger grenade launcher, which is pretty great. And you get the shotgun mode. So if things are getting too uncomfortably close to you, you do have that option without having to injure yourself with your explosives. Um, so that's that's great as well. Um, Going all damage with this weapon is pretty fun. You could go, you know, faster reloads or something, but it, honestly, this weapon doesn't really need it. Overall, like I said, this weapon is just pretty good for demo. You get to blow stuff up, you get some ranged, uh, you also get a shotgun with it, so you get some um, some nice things in it. And it doesn't weigh as much as a lot of other demo weapons, so you can actually kind of uh, mix and match a little bit easier with it. So still probably S tier, still a lot of fun. 
All right, and then on to Gunslinger. So we got the dual Glock 18s. The dual Glock 18s, um, or and you also get a single Glock 18 with this too. Uh, they are quite strong. I would say they're one of Gunslinger's strongest weapons, which is uh, saying quite a bit because Gunslinger has pretty much nothing but strong weapons. Um, they are the highest rate of fire weapon, t- well, tied with the uh, minigun and the Chris. Um, they do a pretty decent amount of damage, um, more like compared to like submachine gun damage than a lot of Gunslinger weapons damage. But it's it's essentially you're using like dual uh, Chris submachine guns with Gunslinger, which with somebody like SWAT, that really wouldn't be too ridiculous. It'd be strong, but it wouldn't be ridiculous. Once you put Rackham up with it, though, it does get pretty crazy. Uh, these are also one of the few weapons that can actually use the, uh, I think it's steady aim that Gunslinger has. Where you get the bonus, uh, slight bonus damage and less recoil when ADSing. That's actually pretty good with a single one of these. Um, and a single one, I should mention, is not half the rate of fire of the two. It's only, um, I can't remember. It's like two is 1,200 rounds per minute. One is 800 rounds a minute. So it's still a pretty high rate of fire just with one of them. And with one of them, you have far less recoil. It's easier to control. Now, these do weigh more than a lot of gunslinger guns. When fully upgraded, I believe they weigh 10, so they are heavy, but they are still really, really strong. Um, I've had no problem with this, with these weapons just destroying pretty much everything with Gunslinger. I think that's still kind of Gunslinger being Gunslinger, but um, very strong weapons, and they're pretty fun to use, too. They're not the most accurate outside of, like, close to medium range, though. That's their only downside, unless you're using, like, one of them, then they're kind of accurate out to about medium range so i'm still gonna put them into s tier um they're not as fun as like the blunderbuss is for me blunderbuss is much funner uh glock 18s are stronger but you could go without them too because um if you haven't seen my other tier list check out like the gunslinger list um there's just a lot of like s tier weapons for gunslinger in there so adding another one you don't really need it but it's kind of cool All right, dual rhinos. Dual rhinos are interesting. Um, They technically do not really like explosive damage, but they do shrapnel damage. So when you shoot something, it hits and then it kind of explodes and throws out some more shrapnel to hit other things around it. Um, This is kind of a cool concept and it's kind of a cool gun to use, but they're not like, they're not super fun in my opinion. They're, They're not like you know, real boring or anything, but they're not like the most fun weapon. They're okay. They're, I believe a tier three, so you can get them fairly early on. Um, especially with gunslinger, since you can just buy one of them and use it. And they're okay overall at doing pretty much everything. Um, they're not like an overpowered weapon for gunslinger at all. Um, sure. You could still run through hell on earth only using them though, because you're playing gunslinger. Um, so probably like B tier ish. They're, like I said, an okay weapon. Um, not bad if you want to have them. All right. The Mosin moving on to sharpshooter weapons. I should say we've got the Mosin Nagant. Uh, the Mosin is really fun. I really enjoy using the Mosin. It is one of my like probably favorite weapons to actually use. It's not really one of the best weapons though. I should say that. Um, sharpshooter has just better base weapons. Um, this one fits into like a weird weight, so that's why it's not always the best to take. Um, you do get a block with it and stab with it. It's stab actually has the longest reach out of any, uh, melee weapon in the game, which is kind of funny. Uh, kind of appropriate though, too. Uh, blocking with it is super useful. Uh, not so much if you're playing like multiplayer, but it is super useful if you're playing solo. Um... Because it's just like, it's so nice if a Flesh Pound or like the King Flesh Pound chases after you, you can just confidently just keep shooting him until he gets close and then, you know, block, go and heal or something, reload your gun. It does have somewhat of a limited ammo pool. It reloads a little bit slow, but not really. It actually reloads super fast for a weapon like this, at least um, compared to in a lot of games. Um, Sights are all right, too. I like them. 
I know they're not everybody's favorite, though. A lot of people like scopes and stuff. Um, overall, I really enjoy the Mosin for my own fun. It's probably at like the top of A tier. I'm not going to put it into S tier just because it's like, I don't, I honestly don't think it's that great of a gun. Uh, you could at least make arguments for these two for being great weapons and being fun. This weapon is super fun. It's similar to like the Zweihander. It's super fun. Maybe not like, you know, meta, but very fun. All right. Then we have the cryo bow or the compound bow. This bow is a tier five sharpshooter weapon. Uh, I should have also mentioned the, the Mosin's a tier three weapon, so you can actually upgrade it and it's pretty easy to get early on. Uh, but the compound bow is a tier five weapon. It does pretty good damage with its secondary fire. You get ice arrows. Um, just like with the crossbow, you can go and pick up your arrows if they go through something or if they hit the ground or if they hit a wall that you can access. As long as they don't go flying out the map, you can go get them back. This also has a spike on it, so you can stab with it as a melee weapon, which is interesting. Um, I mean, it's kind of nice, but it's just something I usually forget about with this weapon. It doesn't stand out as like the, as much as like the Mosin's bayonet. But you can stab with it. Um, you can shoot things with it. You can freeze things with it. Overall, it's a pretty good weapon. If you like the crossbow, then you'll probably like this weapon too. Um, if you hate the crossbow, then you probably won't, won't like this weapon though either. Um, so play around with the crossbow a bit, then see what you think of it and then maybe get this weapon. I'm probably going to put it into like B tier cause I don't really find it to be super fun. If I want to play with the bow, I can play with the crossbow and just level it up, uh, you know, upgrade it. Um, probably actually at the top of B tier really the Glock 18 with the shield. This is a SWAT weapon. This weapon is very awkward, in my opinion. Um, certain people that have gotten used to it really like it, which is understandable. Um, so you have the Glock 18 and you have the shield. This is a tier 5 weapon, I believe, for SWAT. It might be a tier 4, now I think about it. Uh, either way, doesn't really matter. It has a high rate of fire. Uh, it's I think it's actually like the second highest rate of fire at like 1,100 rounds a minute. Um, so just below like the minigun, the Chris and like the, uh, Glocks that are all tied for first place. Um, it has decent sights when shooting it. It does pretty decent, uh, damage per second. It does okay damage per shot compared to like most of the other submachine guns. It also has the unique ability of when you're aiming down sights, you put up your shield. And when you do this, it counts as a blocking weapon. Um, similar to like blocking with any of Berserker's weapons. The main issue with this is that you always have to be ADSing to block. And that I find super awkward. It is not a very fun uh, experience. Because it's just it. If it was just a faster like parry or block animation or just off to the side or maybe just this whole, uh, you know, left side of you is just completely, completely blocked off. Uh, whenever you just have the weapon, it's, it, I think it would be better. And honestly, I don't really care for this weapon all that much. I'm probably going to put it into C tier cause I don't think it's like D tier. It's still a pretty good weapon once you get used to it. Um, and if you like it, then it's probably pretty good for you. For me though, it's C tier though. It just, it feels too awkward and it's just, it's okay. <laughs> so I guess this is going to be my killing floor to uh, DLC weapon tier list. I'm not really necessarily saying, you know, buy these ones and ignore these. Honestly, it's going to come down to personal preference. What weapons do you like? What weapons do you not like? Um, what styles or classes do you play a lot? Uh, you know, are you looking for something super fun? Or are you looking for something that's actually like really good? Uh, if you're looking for something really good, like Frostfang's probably your best weapon that you can get that's a dlc if you're looking for something super fun and actually pretty good check out like the blunderbuss it's a ton of fun and it's pretty decent and then if you just want like a fun silly weapon try out like the minigun or something try out all these in like multiplayer if you can find somebody that has all of them or try playing this in solo if you're on pc um, and enabling the cheats and uh, just trying out the weapons See how they go for you and decide if you want to buy them or not. So I'm going to leave the list here. Thanks everybody for coming and watching this video. I really do appreciate it. Hope you guys enjoyed and I will talk to all of you guys next time. Till then, stay cool and bye.